All right, so we're going. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us this afternoon for our webinar, Scuba 101, an intro to diving and kind of diving on Broadreach as well. Um, just to introduce ourselves. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself first, Claire? Um, yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Claire, Claire Hughes. Um, I am the Caribbean director for Broadreach. Um, I have worked for Broadreach and as a scuba diving instructor um, for over 10 years now. Um, I head up our, our programs down in St. Martin. So I spend all my summer down in St. Martin um, helping our students and our staff with their diving. So um, yeah, I'll be talking about how we teach and everything today. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, if you don't know anything about scuba, you will after this webinar. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Bethany. I am the marketing communications coordinator here. So Claire is kind of going to be the, the expert, subject matter expert, <laughs> and I'll just be here to kind of help manage questions and stuff. Um, if you think of questions during the webinar, feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Um, that way we can, um, we'll have time for questions at the end. But if we haven't answered your question already, then we can answer that there. And, if, and we do have a promo code for anyone that hasn't signed up yet that is, um, would like to do so. Um, so we'll share that as well. Just to get us started with a little bit of history of Broadreach, if you're not familiar with us. Um, so as it says, we are celebrating 30 years this summer. Um, the little picture there is a picture of our very first Broadreach program uh, back in 1993. It was a kayaking trip around the British Virgin Islands. Um, and I like it because it's kind of shows our past and present and future in one photo um, because we have our founder there on the right um, who led the first trip and then our current owner and director um, over here who was the, a student on the first trip um, and later spent many years working for Broadreach as an instructor, um, then here at HQ and then now is the, um, the owner and director. So kind of shows that, you know, um, we're a good community here, I think, and we really believe in our mission, which is to create quality programs. Uh, the map shows where we run programs this summer. We're currently running programs. So we've got um, programs kind of spread out all over the world, but a lot in the Caribbean, which is what we'll be talking about later today. <laughs> now kind of um, shifting gears yeah. to get into school. Oh, so, uh, go into some of the who's, what's, where's, when's, why's, how's of scuba. Um, so why do we dive? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to sort of talk about um, uh, scuba in a way that perhaps if you know nothing about it, uh, we can tell you a little bit about it. So when we were thinking about that, I think why do we dive in the first place and, and what's great about diving um, came to mind and I think um, that one of the obvious things is to get into the ocean and see what it's like underwater um, it's the only way really it's one of the only ways you can see um, up close and personal the beautiful things that are in the ocean um, and we've got some lovely pictures of things you might see um, fish and turtles that thing in the middle there that's stripy and brightly colored is a nudibranch um, which is a little organism but one of my favorites um, <laughs> to see when we're Diving. They live on coral reefs, which you can also see examples of in these, these photos. Um, and really, yeah, seeing all of that life and color that's down there is, is just wonderful. Uh, we also observe the, the, how, how the fish interact and behave as well. Um, so there's lots to see down there. It's another world. It's really quite um, quite amazing. So we do that. Other things that that we dive, the reason we go diving, um, being weightless and kind of um, working on our buoyancy is really almost unique to diving. You can do it in space, I believe. Um, but uh, for most of us, diving is, is the only time we'll feel like truly weightless. Um, I like it because it's, it's a sport. Um, it does require general fitness, but it is non-competitive which we like um, and also it's open to a lot of people with perhaps physical limitations um, and body types and all, all sorts of things like that too. Um, I find it helps with mental health too so um, being underwater breathing very slowly once you're trained and comfortable down there is really nice um, and it really helps me uh, chill out and kind of slow down and appreciate uh, what's around me underwater. Um, and then, of course, the other reason that we dive is to be environmental ambassadors. Um, really, one of the things I love about teaching teenagers in particular um, is we tend to um, 
learn to protect what we are what we love so <laughs> learning to love the ocean um, hopefully means that as students we want to kind of look after it and protect it and while humans are the biggest threat to the ocean these days divers are some of its biggest advocates um, and so those are the things the reasons why a lot of people dive um, and and so reasons we're bringing it to our students as well What's your favorite animal to see besides the nudibranchs? I do like the nudibranchs. I like rays, like stingrays, manta rays, um, things like that. They're just so graceful and, and beautiful underwater. So, all right. So now we know that diving is special. What is special yeah. about diving on Broadreach or learning to dive on Broadreach? Yeah. Um, yeah, diving uh, on Broadreach is, is different. Again, there's lots of places you can dive and learn to dive. Um, but we like it. Um, particularly for teenagers because you're doing it with your peers and your friends. Um, we're taking small groups, our, our maximum group size is 12, with usually with two instructors. Um, we, so we keep the, the group small and the idea is you're doing it with people your own age, people your own ability um, and making friends along the way. So that's a big draw for a lot of our students as well. Uh, the company was founded by sailors and divers, um, and that is what we've gone back to more recently as well. We focus on those diving and sailing programs. The instructors that we employ are also energetic. They're usually relatively young and they are passionate about educating younger divers as well. Yeah. Um, another thing that's special is we're living there, usually living right next to the ocean or on the boat itself. And so we are able to go diving in places that are a little bit more uh, inaccessible to other people. Um, we're living and working, we're self-sufficient. We have all the equipment and the compressor that we need to fill the tanks um, on the boat. So we're not um, on anyone else's schedule. We can um, go diving when and where we like. Um, and then we're on our boat 24 seven. And so our instructors are right there with us. We're taking a bit longer than a typical open water course. And so we're able to um, work with students to work on their buoyancy, to make them into better divers. We're going beyond the basics of say the, the introductory courses to really make divers that we're proud of and, and really hone their skills. So I think spending a little bit more time than the kind of standard four or five days, uh, we're, we're spending 12 or sometimes 21 days out on the water learning to dive. It's really immersive. Um, and so that makes it special. We, we produce really good divers, I think, <laughs> when I see the students underwater. Um, as well, for, for parents who are, who are unfamiliar with diving, um, hopefully it's reassuring to know we're a little bit of a conservative organization when it comes to diving and diving limits. We are not pushing too many boundaries in terms of conditions and the types of sites that we're, we're visiting. Um, the aim is to challenge our students and to push them a little bit out of their comfort zone to make it a fun and adventurous experience, but always keeping safety and, and risk management uh, in mind. So we're not pushing the limits, um, but we are providing a good experience for our kids. Um, there's many examples I can give of that, but for example, um, our students are always in the water with a dive professional. That's one of our policies that uh, perhaps goes a little bit above and beyond what's, what's usual and um, is the bit more conservative. So we um, have a little bit of surf support and extra logistical support things like that help make us a little bit safer and perhaps a bit more reassuring for parents <laughs> too awesome right so who can learn to dive, can learn what, to dive? well <laughs> the simple answer is most people um, can learn to dive and particularly teenagers who are in general good health and are young and generally quite fit um, we always say on our programs, it's, it helps if you know you're kind of an outdoorsy person because you are spending a lot of time on, on outdoors and if you know you like the water. Um, but for most teenagers, yeah, uh, they'll be able to dive. There are some conditions that do preclude diving. Um, 
and there is a medical to, to fill out. So a doctor has to sign off uh, for diving, sign off the paperwork to say that you can dive. But those generally, um, those even on medication um, for ADHD or anxiety, those kind of common medications, um, people like that can dive. And those with um, well-controlled asthma and even things like well-controlled diabetes can dive too. So um, there's a lot of, of conditions that can be accommodated as long as that doctor signs off, uh, off on there. The only things that really don't mix well are people that have seizures um, and bad respiratory problems. Um, but if you have any questions about a specific condition, um, you can ask us, but again, uh, the doctor is always a good person. The only real um, things that, that you have to be able to do to be able to dive is to swim. Um, you don't need to be a great swimmer. You don't have to be an Olympic level swimmer. You do have to be able to swim and to, uh, they call it drown proofing, but tread water for a few minutes um, in the ocean. And so um, you don't have to be breaking any records or anything, but it does mean that those who perhaps have a few physical differences or, or adaptation need, need adapt adaptations can join us on dives. Um, there's plenty of stuff we can do. So if anyone has any questions about that, uh, give us a shout. Great. Yeah. Okay, the next question is how do we teach diving? Yeah. <laughs> so how we teach diving is a, 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 a question I get quite a lot from people who perhaps aren't familiar with diving because it's a fairly niche, uh, niche activity. So, um, so I think some people think that we kind of just throw students into the ocean and let them get on with it. And really, I wanted to, to kind of explain that we don't do that. Uh, we are going to take it slow and step by step. There's a real process to how we teach diving. We uh, follow the PADI system of education. So our diver instructors are PADI certified. And that's the professional association of dive instructors. Um, but it's been around for a long time. It has a, a lot of rules and regulations that we follow and stick to, um, and it's the biggest dive certification agency in the world, and so it's well respected. Um, and hopefully, that can, you can trust that we're using those those techniques and following those guidelines, um, and, and we're not kind of making it up as we go along. It's definitely something that we're sticking to. Um, so we start we start slow, obviously, but the first afternoon that you arrive, usually I'm talking mainly about in the Caribbean, but this implies. To, to other places as well. Even before you get on your boat, we'll fit you for your equipment, um, making sure that your equipment fits well, um, that it's in good condition, um, it's the right size for you, things like that. Um, and then uh, the first afternoon, usually after you arrive, so we, we jump straight in, we dive straight into dive training. Um, we will start to put that equipment together. We'll learn about what we're using. We'll put it on a tank. We'll work out how it works. Your instructor will take you through slowly how it all um, functions and what you have to do to, to make it work right. Um, and it, the equipment that we use is kind of suitable for beginners. It's specially chosen to be easy to use and good for those who are learning. So um, instructors will take students through how to do that. Um, we'll learn how to take care of it as well because we're responsible for that. And we'll learn uh, about things like the pre-dive safety checks. So there's, there's safety checks that we need to do. And right from the first uh, moment, we're going to start learning about those so that they become habits rather than, than having to remember. Um, then once we put the equipment together, um, we start off in shallow water. And I think the picture in the middle there kind of shows the sort of water that we're in. Uh, I think Bethany's pointing that out. It's shallow water. It's very calm. Um, it's like a pool. Um, in, in terms of depth and kind of clarity. Although it is in the ocean, we do use the ocean for diving. That comes with its advantages, but we're definitely making sure it's a calm, uh, shallow space to learn the skills we need. Um, as you can see, you can stand up in it. And so that makes for a very safe uh, environment to be, to be learning. The first time we breathe underwater is a really special time um, and it's, it's just a unique feeling that it's hard to, to describe, um, but everyone's faces when they, when they take that first breath, it's always, it's always a picture. 
<laughs> and we're just kneeling in that water. We've just got our heads um, below there. And we're working through the skills that we need to both dive and to deal with problems that uh, might come up underwater. A common one is like getting a bit of water in your mask. We'll learn how to remove that um, and how to, to deal with that sort of situation. We're also, I think these photos <laughs> illustrate we're, we're learning how to dive from a dinghy so the, the picture on the bottom we will learn um, as time goes on how to dive from a smaller dinghy um, and how to enter the water that way we'll learn how to to float and use our equipment at the surface as well as underneath and of course those are all important safety procedures if something does go wrong or something goes awry that we can deal with any situation that might be underwater um, safely and that's the point of doing all this training um, we'll familiarize ourselves with our equipment and how it works underwater um, and what happens is that you have to master those skills to move on so the instructor will assess everybody and keep practicing until uh, we have mastered the skills in shallow water and that happens before we move on to deeper water so that usually takes a day or so a couple of days um, the, the great thing about being with broadreach on a, on a longer program like broadreach is that usually after the first day people are getting the hang of things students are are getting on with it and kind of getting the hang of it however if not there is time to catch up a little bit later in the trip so we can continue to work on those skills even if um, people are taking a little bit longer than others to to pick things up um, and then after we have kind of finished in the shallow water, we go a bit deeper. So we start at 20 or 30 feet on the first couple of dives and we work our way slowly deeper um, to a maximum of 60 feet. Um, the minimum for certification is four dives, but obviously because we're on a trip and it's longer, we can do more than that. And every time you go underwater, you're just practicing and, and perfecting those skills, um, which is something that I really, I really like because you can improve your buoyancy, like I said, it just gives you more of a complete experience. Um, yeah, so once you're certified, you should be have all those skills necessary to dive with a buddy. We don't go diving alone, not not in our um, in our organization in the paddy system. We always go with a buddy, um, and obviously those problems uh, that that arise occasionally can be dealt with safely and in a controlled manner, and that's the aim as well. Um, so. It, we always say as well, if you have a gap from diving, although your card will um, be valid for life once you're certified, your cert card, your certification doesn't expire in that sense. Um, we do recommend and Paddy recommends that after about six months out of the water, people get refreshed. So if you have a student who is already certified and perhaps hasn't dove in a while, definitely should have a refresher. Um, and that's something we do with our certified students as well. Also, once you're certified, it's just for the water that you're in uh, or the conditions that you're in as well. Um, we do um, diving in the Caribbean, it's warm, it's fairly calm, it's it's very approachable. Um, and so we caution students that if they move on to say colder water, if you're going back to Canada or Seattle and go diving um, somewhere cold, you get more training, or if you want to specialize um, and do wreck diving or something like that, that you get more training. So there's an emphasis on that um, within, within the diving community that you should always train for what you're going for. Um, and then, of course, there's also the book work that we do. I've got a picture of some students there enjoying <laughs> reading their books. And uh, what I do just like to say is there is an academic component to the PADI um, system, to your open water certification. Um, there is a book to read. It's fairly um, short and it's uh, fairly, I want to say large print, but there's lots of pictures and kind of illustrations. Um, PADI has a great um, system that allows people to learn in a different way to be accommodated. So there are lots of things we can do if your student isn't super keen on reading or, or perhaps has learning differences. Um, with talking to students, we can do things as, as seminars. There's various videos you can watch. There's all sorts of ways that instructors can help a student. Um, and there are tests to do. There's a there's a, a quiz at that I should say exam at the end <laughs> that, that is written, but it is multiple choice. And again, there are lots of ways we can work with students to uh, to get them through um, the knowledge they need 
the, I think as an instructor, I, I know that the understanding of the concepts is important rather than the technique for um, teaching. And so um, I'm really um, always pleased to work with a student to get them through um, understanding the things they need to do rather than focusing on doing it in a certain way. So yeah, definitely those who have learning differences can be accommodated as well. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Sometimes we What's see this next? problem. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. What if you what if don't like diving? Yeah, I do get this question a little bit, particularly for people who are coming um, and have never done it before. They don't know if they like it. And, and like anything in life, sometimes you find that diving is not for you. Um, we will always ref uh, work with the student as much as they need to to um, to achieve uh, their goals of, of learning to dive if, if that's what they want but if they find that they're not able to or they they uh, just don't like it that much um, we're not obviously not going to force anyone to dive and so on a broad reach trip if you find that you're not enjoying the diving or you want to um, you you you, you don't want to progress or don't want to do it anymore there's plenty of other things we can do on a trip um, so the time in the Caribbean is certainly not wasted. Um, there's obviously sailing. We're living and working on a boat. So there's sailing the big boats. We also have smaller boats that we tend to, to do. And the point of a lot of these trips is also to learn sailing. Um, we do a lot of water sports. There's wakeboarding, um, kneeboarding, paddle boarding, all kinds of different water sports that, that people take part in and really find that they enjoy. Um, we're also snorkeling is always there. And snorkeling um, is just really a giant stride off the boat you can just jump in and snorkel you can still learn a lot about marine life from snorkeling um, I love it just to check out the reefs and things you can see so much uh, isn't that true Bethany <laughs> yes yeah. Definitely. I love it. yeah snorkeling <laughs> Um, yeah, and then there's also, you know, you're making friends, you're learning those life skills, you're, you're taking part in all the leadership and, and things like that that we do. Um, we just do a lot of hiking and community service. There's so much that we pack into a trip, um, particularly these introductory trips. We're giving people a flavor of different things so that they can um, explore them later on. So there's definitely um, other things you can do if for some reason in the unlikely event that you, you find that diving's not for you. Um, there's plenty to to enjoy on a broad reach trip. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And branching off from that, um, mm -hmm. I can speak a little bit about oh, yeah. where you can go to learn to dive with broad reach. <laughs> um, these are some of our trips that it would be good for beginning divers. Um, although we do also have options um, if you happen to be a more advanced diver or just discover that you love it and would like to um, continue to specialize further and earn more advanced certifications, uh, we have those options as well. Um, so most of our trips that are suitable for beginners are located in our Caribbean base um, out of St. Martin. So uh, we have a 12 day scuba and sailing voyage for both uh, middle school and high school students. So uh, separate boats for middle school students and for high school students. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be a 12 day around the Leeward Islands. It's introductory, uh, so you can come with no experience. And it's designed to kind of give you a taste of what it's like living on a boat, um, doing a bit of sailing, a bit of diving, and kind of seeing what you enjoy the most and visiting um, several different islands and kind of getting to experience the differences between the islands in the Leewards. Um, the 21 day scuba and sailing voyage is also available. We have a version for middle schoolers and one for high schoolers. So it's very similar to the 12 day trip, um, obviously with the difference that it's longer. So you'll be able to go a little bit more in depth. Um, so for the 21 day trip, you can come in with no experience, um, but you would be able to earn not only the first open water certification, but you could also earn your advanced open water certification since it is um, a longer trip. And so you'll go into um, some other specialties as well, um, be able to hone your diving skills a little bit more. And you'll also visit uh, some additional islands as well. Um, for people who are, might be interested in marine biology as well, um, there's a couple other trips that are good for introductory divers. Um, so we have marine biology voyages. There is an intro to marine biology voyage that's 12 days for middle school students. Um, that's uh, a little bit shorter, so similar to the 12-day scuba and sailing, but with a little bit of marine biology instruction. 
and then a 17 day one for high schoolers. So again, you'll um, be able to earn your scuba certification, learn a bit of sailing, and then also um, earn a couple college credits actually um, related to marine biology. So it's kind of a cool way to learn a little bit more about the things that you're seeing um, as you dive. And if you're not interested in living on a boat um, and are, would like to learn more marine biology, our Curacao Marine Biology Adventure is a land-based program. Um, it's the only one of the trips that I've highlighted here that is not uh, based out of our St. Martin base. Um, and so that one, you'll be doing more land-based dives. Um, you'll be living in a research station, Carmabi, down in Curacao, um, assisting with some coral reef restoration and research, um, and also have the opportunity to earn some college credits. So um, all of these trips, if you are already certified, you can participate as well, um, but they're really great trips, I think, for people who have no dive experience or maybe um, have just done like a discovery dive before and want to continue yeah. to learn more. Yeah. All right. What's next? So we're going to go over a few frequently asked questions. Um, we have gotten some in the Q&A chat as well. So if you think of more, feel free to leave those here while we go over the answers to these questions that we get um, pretty often from parents yeah. and students. <laughs> students, yeah. And the big one is, um, what happens if we see a shark? I get asked this quite a lot um, by both students and parents. And um, the picture here, I think, is from our Fiji shark studies. So this is yes. a very up close <laughs> and personal. Um, this is an advanced shark dive. But um, we do, even on introductory uh, courses, see the odd shark, reef sharks. Um, and I think um, as a scuba diver and instructor, when people ask, what happens if you see a shark? I usually am like, well, point it out for everyone to see. Um, <laughs> but we really, um, there's like that whole reality versus uh, your perception uh, thing. And I think a lot of people think of sharks as scary creatures that are kind of aggressive uh, um, and to be avoided. But um, most of the time, particularly in the areas of the Caribbean, Caribbean where we are diving, um, they are fairly, uh, uh, small sharks, they're reef sharks uh, or black tips uh, sharks. They're not really the aggressive type. Um, and uh, sharks get generally get a bit of a, a bad rap and to be these vicious predators that are after humans. We're really, um, divers in particular, are not really their preferred um, their preferred prey. <laughs> and so they're really more curious about us as divers under the water. Um, so I never feel the, the need to have like protection or, or a weapon or anything like that. It's nothing like that. They're, they usually um, kind of cruise by and swim off um, most of the time. So um, we do see sharks occasionally. It really isn't um, anything that we're concerned about naturally. Uh, we, we get very excited about seeing a shark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, results not typical from this photo unless we do our, our shark, shark studies, studies trip program. in Fiji. Yeah, but it is a cool picture of a shark. Yes, so I like it. <laughs> Right. What do you do if it rains? Oh, what do we do? Yeah, we go diving. Um, it's really um, a great thing to do in the rain because you're getting wet anyway. Um, but yeah, what the great thing about diving is it, it is a, a, a pastime that just carries on when it when it rains because it really doesn't make a difference, particularly when you're under the water. In fact, one of the coolest things I've ever seen is observing a rain shower or a rain. Uh, a, yeah, a rain from under the water. So it kind of, it's like being in a, a tent or something and the rain is, is battering the, the surface and you can see it from underwater. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we can still dive and, and things like that. I know some people have questions about lightning, if there's a lightning storm. Um, and that also when you're out in the ocean on a boat um, isn't really a, as big a, a concern as say if you were boating on a lake. So um, we don't tend to, to have a lot of uh, lightning in the Caribbean anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly still safe to dive under the water, um, even if there's a bad weather. So yeah, we love it. <laughs> We're getting wet anyway. <laughs> Yeah, rain or shine. <laughs> yeah, and the rain in the Caribbean is so warm and, and kind of it's not that, doesn't have the wind or the, 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 oh, the chill to it that it does in other places. So yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, can you dive at night? Can you dive at night? 
Yeah, absolutely. We dive at night and some people may be thinking, wait, what? why would you go at night? Um, it just seems crazy. And I must admit, when I was uh, learning to dive, the thought of going down in the dark uh, absolutely terrified me. Um, and I very quickly, actually, it took me about two days to, to change my, my idea about that. And I actually went diving at night. Um, and it's a really great activity. The reason we do it is a lot of nocturnal life comes out once it gets dark or once it gets to dusk. And so the reef changes um, and uh, other uh, creatures and organisms that you don't see during the day come out and so it becomes a whole different place. Um, you also tend to slow down a little bit because you're kind of looking in the beam of light um, and it kind of narrows your focus down to a smaller area so it becomes a different experience and as you can see actually from the picture on the right of the screen there we actually often go at dusk and it gets dark while we're under the under the um, the water and that's a really good time because a lot of fish feed and kind of come out um, but it also is a little bit less intimidating for perhaps a first time night diver so um, although it might seem uh, a little bit like why would you do that um, most uh, most students particularly uh, end up loving the night diving and also it's a good excuse to have hot chocolate and, and cake after <laughs> your night dive so I always like coming back to the boat and doing that. Yeah. yeah, it definitely seems like a highlight for a lot of students. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it makes you feel very cool when you do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the nice thing about if you're doing a liveaboard program is you, there's a lot of flexibility and like, um, yeah, it, interest if the group's interested in doing night dives so yeah you're right there. I think one, one of my favorite things actually particularly on the liverboards and something that's very unique about living on a boat is sunrise dives so you go in when it's still dark but the sun rises as you are diving and that is really cool uh, because you don't even get to do that at a dive shop usually so yeah special yeah all right last one What's can next? anything <laughs> hurt us underwater yeah, yeah. I mean, it it definitely can, and and the pictures in in this um in this slide are of a, a lionfish there on the right, um, which uh, does have some some venomous spines. We learn all about it on our marine bio programs for sure. Um, we look out for them, um, but they're very slow moving. And really, what we're focusing on is kind of good buoyancy and being aware of our surroundings. This is where good dive training comes into, and why we do all of these things underwater for in the early stages of training to make sure that we don't accidentally touch anything that could hurt us. Um, there's lots of things like that on the reef that might give us a sting like a jellyfish or um, coral uh, might end up making a little um, abrasion on you if you bump into it. And that's why it's important that we get good dive training. Um, and we listen to our instructors that we um, are aware of our surroundings, things like that. And so our instructors work a lot with students to make sure they're aware of it and um, produce those divers that that really know their stuff. Um, yeah, so things can hurt us underwater, um, but really not a lot of stuff. There's not really any aggressive creatures, particularly in the Caribbean, that will kind of come after us. It's more uh, avoiding bumping into them, I think, would be the <laughs> things that we don't want to do. Um, and like I say, scuba diving is um, it requires training because it is a very safe sport, um, but it does require that you know what you're doing. And so um, it's it's definitely good to get some good instruction from people who make sure that you understand what you're doing. Yeah. Right. All right. So we did have a couple questions oh, cool. um, come in Love through the Q&A box. Um, if anyone else has questions, feel free to type those now. I will also mention um, if you have something more like maybe personalized to your situation, uh, you can yeah. give us a call or you know, if you just want to chat more about the different trips um, as well. Yeah. Our number is there, 919-256-8200. Uh, also, if you have more dive specific questions, feel free to reach out directly to Claire. She is yeah. um, our resident expert or one of them at least. Um, <laughs> her email is there, chughes at gobertbroadreach.com. And if you are ready to sign up for a trip, um, you can enroll for $250 off tuition with this promo code SCUBA101. Um, and that's valid for a couple weeks, so until the 23rd. Um, the deposit is refundable now until January 15th. So it's a $1,000 deposit to hold your spot. Um, so you can kind of enroll now risk-free if you're still waiting on dates and things. Um, so I have a question about travel asking, is there coordination in getting kids to the location? 
I have concerns about putting my 12 year old on a flight by himself. Um, definitely a concern a lot of parents have, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's a question I get asked a lot. And uh, yeah, we, um, when particularly in St. Martin, we are meeting our students at the, the point that they are their destination. So for St. Martin, that's SXM Airport. And um, that is where we meet students. We don't require certain flights to, um, to program. We don't have to take a specific flight. And there are lots of options, particularly to St. Martin. Um, for a, a student as young as 12, we do occasionally put families who are on the same flights. Once everyone's got their information in, we can put um, families in in contact with each other so you can coordinate particularly for younger students they are very often required to fly as unaccompanied minors so a 12 or 13 year old might be required by the airline to fly and be escorted by an airline employee all the way through um, so that is an option it's an option for older students even if it's not required um, and then other things that parents have done in the past some parents have flown with their students to St Martin is particularly a nice place to take a vacation um, so some families choose to do that um, and like I say, yeah, we can put you in contact with people who may be on similar flight paths to you. Um, we also have a travel agent that we kind of work with if people are nervous about booking flights themselves or navigating travel for, for younger students. Um, we can definitely help with that. But yeah, it is a question we get asked a lot. And it is a, a nerve wracking experience to be put uh, to put your student on a plane when they're when they're young. Um, but we also um, kind of see it as part of the experience of the travel. Um, can be part of that learning experience and we think it's very valuable for a lot of students to have that independence and um, I think we found Bethany haven't we that travel day usually goes fairly smoothly as well yeah um, most of the time yeah yeah it's put a lot of work into the you know uh, preparation and then it ends up going pretty smoothly pretty smooth yeah we also yeah. will send everyone a t-shirt um, oh yeah a broader's t-shirt to wear we recommend you wear it on travel day um, quite often they'll end up being on a multiple Broadway students will end up being on the same flight, particularly if they're traveling to St. Martin um, for one of our Caribbean based programs. So usually they'll be able to pick each other out in the airport, in the airport. and then kind of um, recognize each other, which is a little bit. It's also nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. All right. And we had one more question about um, how would we handle or how do we handle any ear equalization issues? Oh, that is a great question. Um, and it's really important. Yeah, equalization on when you're diving is really important um, so that you don't damage your ears, but also um, early equalization and learning how to do it properly is important for avoiding ear infections. Um, in, and particularly in the younger students that all their tubes and, and in the inside of their ears is a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's really um, important. Um, I always, tell my students um, to practice equalizing and to, to right from the start be, be equalizing even if you're going just a few feet down so the it becomes a habit um, the earlier you start doing it so it just is a part of diving for me now and I pass that on to my students is that early equalization um, and learning how to do it properly and not forcing it to is important so that training again um, taking the time to explain why you're doing it making sure students understand the reason behind it the mechanics of it the kind of reason we're doing we need to equalize in the first place um, can avoid a lot of problems and then just yeah making sure everyone understands and reminding them um, to do it so that it becomes um, like I say habits rather than something to remember to do it just becomes a part of diving um, yeah and it helps us avoid a lot of problems down the line uh, a lot of ear infections and, and sort of um, yeah discomfort as well it, it helps avoid so yeah we're definitely making sure that uh, instructors are aware that that's something um, yeah with younger students and people who are maybe a little bit smaller that we that we do early and often yeah and that's another nice thing that be able to spend so much time with your instructor and be living on the boat with them is if you're having issues, issues. Um, yeah yeah you can work through it what I, I kind of forgot to mention was we also have a support boat in st martin that kind of follows the group um follows around the the, the various boats that are in 
in the area. And we have people like myself, the leadership team and other resources, other dive instructors on there who are able to work with students that perhaps need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more time to perfect a different a certain skill, or they take a bit longer to get down. That happens sometimes. Um, they can take it a little bit slower. So there's all sorts of different resources working, sometimes working with a different instructor can just help you break through and suddenly you're like, oh, I get it now. So um, that's another great thing about our broad reach trip is there is a little bit more support. I feel um, there is that variation uh, as well uh, available to our instructors and to our students. Yeah. Awesome. I don't see any Are other questions, any questions in the box. Um, great. Those were some good ones. Yeah. Again, if you have really good more specific questions, maybe about like travel from your particular destination or location to, um, to the destination, yeah. uh, feel free to give us a call. We're happy to talk things through with you. Yeah, that's great. And again, yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. It was really nice to talk about Scuba 101 and how we teach and all of that stuff. So yeah, I hope it's been useful um, and informative. And yeah, I'd love to answer any questions that people have, any specific questions. Uh, you have my email address. Thanks so much. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye.